Hi, welcome to this video. Today we will talk about recursion. We will see what recursion is and how recursion works. We will also see some examples of recursion in the nature and in the computer science. In this slide, we see an example of recursion. As you can see, in recursion there is an iteration or a loop as it is known in programming language. Well, let's start and see what recursion is and how recursion works. So, what is recursion? Formally said, recursion in computer science is a method where the solution to a problem depends on solutions to smaller instances of the same problem. The approach can be applied to many types of problems and recursion is one of the central ideas of computer science. Simply said, Recursion is a programming technique where a method or a function calls itself within the program text. Note that recursion is not a program state, it is just a technique. We will clarify the recursion technique by the following example of factorials. Note that factorials call themselves until zero factorial is reached. Now let's make a function for the factorials like this. Because factorials call themselves until they reach zero factorial, the function stops at zero factorial and the value is returned to the function. Note that zero factorial is equal to one. Now let's calculate some factorials before we explain how recursion works in factorial function. As said earlier, zero factorial is equal to one. This is a definition in the mathematics. One factorial is one times zero factorials which equals to one. Two factorial equals to two times one factorial which equals two. Three factorials equals to three times two factorial which equals to 3 times 2, which equals to 6. This goes on for 4 factorial, 5 factorial, etc. As you can see, we use the result of the previous factorial to calculate the next factorial. So, in general, we can say that n factorial is n times n minus 1 factorial. Now let's see how recursion works in the factorial function. Let's calculate 4 factorial by the function we just created. According to the general rule as we have seen in the previous slide, 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 factorial. That means we first have to calculate 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 factorial. The result of 2 factorial is not known yet, so we need to calculate 2 factorial first, which is equal to 2 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is also not known, so we need to calculate 1 factorial, which is 1 times 0 factorial. 0 factorial is by definition 1 and is consequently known. Now we can calculate by recursion 1 factorial as we can substitute the value of 0 factorial into the function. Once we have calculated the value of 1 factorial, we can calculate 2 factorial by substituting the value of 1 factorial. Likewise, we can calculate now 3 factorial and 4 factorial. This is the way how recursion works. Note that recursion needs a so-called stop or exit condition to go back to solve the original problem. In our example, the stop condition is the zero factorial which value is known. Well, this is an example of recursion in computer science in the Python programming language. In this example, we have the same factorial function but now programmed in Python. As you can see, we have in this example 
two exit conditions, namely n is zero and n is one. This is because the value of both n is zero and n is one is equal to one. In the else statement, we see that the factorial function is calling himself. This is what we call the recursive call. Now let's see how recursion works in the divide and conquer tag. Suppose we have a problem of n size. Now we will divide this problem into subproblems until the subproblem is so small that we are able to solve it. So the problem of n size is divided into a half n size, which is divided into one fourth n size. This subproblem is subsequently divided into one eight n size. Now suppose we are able to solve the subproblem of one eight n size. If we can solve the subproblem of one eight n size, then we are also able to solve the subproblem of one fourth n size. And we do this by recursion. And if we can solve the subproblem of one fourth n size, we can also solve the subproblem of a half n size. And finally, we can solve the original problem of n size by recursion. So, as you can see, we work from back to forward in recursion. Note that the exit condition in the divide and conquer technique is the smallest subproblem which we can solve. Here is another example of recursion. This is a Mona Lisa painting. As you can see, the painting is returning in the painting which is held by Mona Lisa. This is an example of ferns. Ferns are fractals in the nature, which can be modeled by computers using a recursive algorithm. This is another example of recursion. In this picture, we see neurons in our body. You will need a recursive algorithm if you want to model this on computers. Well, to summarize, in this video, we have discussed what recursion is, how recursion works, and we have also seen a few examples of recursion. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.